enough. There's no way. It's only by his blood. The salvation of the Lord brings strength. And it only comes through his blood. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy of our praise. Somebody make some noise in here. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You could be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, I, before I get started here, I want to thank everybody who came out and helped with the Tracy House. You know, this has been a vision of mine that, that the Lord has given me to, to serve our community. How many know that if we're not the heart of God in this community, He's not coming. And God has given me a great passion for the lost, a great passion for those that are suffering, and a great passion for those who have need. And not just spiritually, but naturally. So what we've done is, is we're setting up this Tracy house with a clothing closet because the Bible says that we should clothe those that have no clothing. And we're also going to feed out of that house because the Bible says you should feed those that have nothing to eat. Do you hear me? So when we get this open and, and it's getting so close, I'm excited. We're going to need lots of volunteers. So all those who said they wanted to be a part of outreach, you're going to have an amazing opportunity and lots of it because we're going to serve dinners out of there. We're going to serve whatever we can serve out of there. We're going to serve our community and we are going to be the hands and feet of Jesus in our community. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So all those that came out yesterday, I went home like, yes, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I, I, I was feeling it yesterday. Praise God. But it's a good thing I'm young because I don't have to worry about that. Amen. Unlike some other people I know. I'm not saying their names or anything. Praise God. You know who you are. All right. So a couple weeks ago, <clears throat> I, I preached... A message on conviction. Anybody remember that message? And I told you I was going to come back and talk about condemnation. Today I want to talk about the difference between conviction and condemnation. Because we talked about conviction, but sometimes people live in such a state that they're so condemned, they live in condemnation, and they can't move forward in Christ. Amen? I must be in the right church because none of y'all are, are, are under condemnation, right? Woot, woot. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you allow your servant to get out of the way, that your Holy Spirit would minister to our hearts and our minds. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Go with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm going to start at verse 1. There is therefore now, there is therefore now, when? Now. When? Now. There is therefore now, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For who? Those that are in Christ Jesus. Who do not walk according to the flesh. Uh-oh. 
We like to rehearse and we like to speak the first part of the scripture, but then we stop. We don't want to continue. The first part sounds real good. Now, therefore, there is no condemnation. So we kind of get stuck. Because when we feel convicted by the Holy Spirit, we think it's condemnation. No? Well, I'm glad it's just me. Praise the Lord. I don't want people to get confused. So I want to talk about the difference of conviction and condemnation. And I want to talk about why. Why? So conviction is from God. Condemnation is from the devil. Conviction leads to life. Condemnation leads to despair. Conviction ends in joy. Condemnation ends in sorrow. Conviction makes us want to change. Uh-oh. Condemnation makes us think we can't change. Uh-oh. Conviction leads to new identity in Christ Jesus. Condemnation leads to old identity in sin. I'm going to talk about these in a minute, but I want to get through them. Conviction brings specific awareness of sin. Condemnation brings vague uncertainty about sin. Conviction looks to Jesus. Condemnation looks inward towards self. Conviction is a blessing. Condemnation is a burden. Oh my. I'm going to read on in chapter 8 of Romans. I want to keep going. For the law of the spirit, in verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Oh my. I want y'all to get this. The reason I wanted to sing that song again, because sometimes we take for granted what Jesus did for us. So what, what this scripture is saying is that Jesus took my filthy sin on himself on the cross. And he said, here, son, take my righteousness. He said, I'll take that sin and I'll bear the price for it so that you can live in my righteousness. Because there is no power in the flesh. Uh-oh. Now, sometimes we get, you know, in ourselves and we think we're, you know, you're self-righteous. Well, don't you see how good I'm doing, God? Right? It's a good thing you're not like that. Sometimes we get self-righteous thinking that we're the ones that's doing all the right things, right? God is not going to bless you because of the things that you do. He's going to bless you because of what he did. Oh, my. See, we think, we get all self-righteous thinking that. Hello? Give me another microphone. Devil ain't going to win today. Praise the Lord. This message is too powerful for the enemy to win here today. Uh-uh. He ain't going to win today. We're going to talk about this. Because, listen, sometimes we allow our good deeds or the good things that we do deceive us into thinking that we deserve the blessings of God because we're so good. 
Well, I come to church. God, you better bless me. You have to bless me. Listen, that's not the way this works. That's not the way this works. He will not bless you for your good deeds or what you do. He only blesses you because of the blood of Christ on the cross. He said, I knew you couldn't, so I did. The weakness of our flesh causes us to fall short. Man, y'all quiet today. Verse 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Let me break that down. We have the law. Moses gave us the law, right? But it made us weak because of our flesh. Oh, my. So I recognize that in my flesh and in trying to fulfill the lust of my flesh, the law is weak because I can't abide in the law. And Christ knew that. God knew that. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin, not his sin, but our sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. Wow. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. But listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you how God gave it to me. You know what conviction is? Conviction is the Holy Spirit reminding you that you are not the same person. The Holy Spirit's not beating you up. He's reminding you. That's why you got to renew your mind in Christ daily. Because the conviction of God is not set to pronounce judgment. What did Jesus say? The woman was caught in adultery, and all these people, they had their stones. They was ready to kill her. They was ready to stone her. And Jesus started writing in the sand. What he was writing, I guess I'll find out when I get home, because that's one of my questions. I want to know what he was writing in the sand. Listen, when Jesus finished writing in the sand, he looked at all those around her, and he says, which one of you? has no sin in your life. And he says, if you have no sin in your life, you can cast the first stone. Oh, my. Everyone began to drop their stones, and they began to walk away. He looked at the woman, and he says, who condemns you? She said, Lord, there's, there's nobody left. And listens to Jesus' words. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. The power of that statement. Who condemns you? I want to tell you something. Are you still breathing? You still have a heartbeat? Condemnation, if you look up the word condemned, it means you've already been judged. Judgment has been passed and you're guilty. The blood of Jesus and the reason Jesus came was not to condemn you. Oh, my. He came to set you free. He said, neither do I judge you, but go and sin no more. 
The conviction of the Holy Spirit, he said, and, and let me finish. I mean, I get right ahead of myself. See how I am? I'm so excited about this message. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Verse 5, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds, somebody say, my mind, on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. I got a secret for you. Nobody likes conviction, right? Because nobody likes to be reminded of what you're doing, right? But that's a good thing. You know what that tells you? That tells you that you're in right standing with God. If there was no conviction, that means you're not in right standing with God. Let me explain. How many times when you was doing your dirt and doing your grime, when you wasn't with Christ, did the Holy Spirit come up and say, hey, Mike, what you're doing is not right, man. You, you can't do that. Never. Trust me, I lived in it. And guess what? The devil never condemned me for it either. So do you know the devil's name? He's the liar, and he is the accuser of the brethren. Let me tell you how many times the devil condemned me when I was living in the world and doing the things of the world. Not once. And there was no conviction either. Conviction is to remind you, renew your mind, remind you that that is not who you are anymore. Jesus took my sinful nature and he took my price for my sins and he says, I'm going to give you my promises. Oh my. So the Holy Spirit says, that's not who you are anymore. Condemnation says, Look at you. Look what you did. God don't hear your prayers. You're not saved. Condemnation is to keep you stuck. Guess what? The Bible says that all of my sins have been washed away. My old life has been washed away. It is no more. So when the devil comes to condemn me for what I've done in my past, I like to remind him of his future. Right? Because his judgment has already come. Let me show you. Go to Revelation chapter 12, and I'm going to verse 10. See, some of y'all might not believe me, but I'm going to show you. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength. Salvation brings strength. Right? And the power of his Christ. Christ brings and gives us power have come. For the accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. The enemy's already been judged. And so when the enemy lies to you and says, oh, well, remember yesterday you did this. God's not going to hear your prayers. That's a lie from the pits of hell. And that's all the enemy has is lies. So he replaces God's promises with his lies so he can keep you stuck where you are. Somebody's going to get free here today. That never happened to you all? 
Satan never lied to try to lie to you. He never tried to lie to you and tell you that you're not good enough. You're not worthy. Oh, my. Y'all got to stay awake at least for 10 more minutes. I'm, uh, give me at least 20 minutes, all right? Maybe 25. I don't want to lie at the pulpit. And verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. How'd they overcome him? By the blood. Not by their righteous deeds. Not because they did it all right. Because of the blood. Because of the blood. It was the blood. And the word of their testimony. Because they testified of the goodness of God and their freedom because of the blood of Christ. But some of us would rather stay stuck in condemnation and identify ourselves with our old carnal nature instead of taking on the new creation in Christ Jesus. Listen, you need to identify yourself with the promises of God. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. But we keep identifying ourselves with the flesh and the old man. And the enemy would like to tell you that tomorrow you're going to fall short again. And guess what? You will, but the grace of God says, son, my daughter, I already knew. You see, when he called you and sanctified you and gave you his righteousness, and this is not a license to sin, y'all, so don't, don't get the preaching wrong. I don't want y'all taking it wrong. Y'all still need to clean up, okay? I, I'm, not, <laughs> I, I'm not no grace preacher. I, I, I'm telling you because the grace of God has already washed away. He's already washed away tomorrow's sin too. See, God is what? Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So guess what? When the righteousness of God comes into our life from his blood, from his cleansing blood. He forgave my sin from there to there because he already knew. Come on. He already knew. He said, son, when I called you, I already knew what you were going to do wrong in your future. He said, because I occupy all of your past, all of your future, all of your present, I am omnipresent. There's nothing you're going to do that has me confused or is going to shock me or is going to surprise me. Son, I already knew right here you was going to make a huge mistake. He said, but my blood is sufficient. Oh, my. Oh, my. Conviction leads to life. It reminds us of the promises of God, who the word says that you are. The enemy reminds you of who you were. I don't know about you, but I got excited. Y'all, are y'all with me? So why does the enemy try to condemn us? Because a heart that is condemned has no prayer. When you feel like, man, I've screwed up and, and God's not going to hear my prayers. And oh my, I just, I, I just can't do it. Y'all don't feel like that? The enemy don't ever come at you like that? 
Remind him of the blood of Jesus. A condemned heart will not feel worthy. A condemned heart will drive us to despair. How can God use me? Look what I've done. I blew it. It's all over. I missed it. I missed the mark. A condemned heart will quit. Well, it's all over now. Might as well quit. This is why the enemy brings condemnation. He wants you to quit. He wants you to quit before you ever become what God has ordained you to be. Before you walk in the promises. Before you walk in his purpose. Before you walk in the kingdom. He wants to condemn you. Ah, goodness. But sometimes we get conviction confused with condemnation. Sometimes God will be convicting your heart and you'll be like, Shh, I'm saved, covered by the blood. You ain't, never buy, you ain't never done something in your life and the first thing your neighbor does is run up to you and say, I thought you was a Christian. If that ain't never happened to you, you ain't been saved long enough. Listen, I I see people in church say, oh my goodness, what'd you do? I thought you was a Christian. Condemnation can come through anybody. Condemnation can come through your family. Nobody can hurt you like family, trust me. Oh, come on. Condemnation can come from church folks. The enemy can use anybody at any time. Because we're not always walking in the spirit. I'm not. So until I start walking on water, I'm probably going to fall short. So then we get all self-righteous looking down on people because they're walking a certain way, talking a certain way, doing a certain thing, and and we want to condemn them. I can't believe you did that. What is wrong with you? I thought you were a Christian. Get yourself together. I'm kidding. I'm I'm kidding. don't, Don't get mad at me. Too many times... We mistake the conviction of the Holy Spirit who is reminding us of the righteousness we received from God. Therefore, I am not that person anymore. He said, son, I washed all that away. Why are you walking back in it? Why are you going back to it? I know y'all got it all together, but I don't. That's why I got to preach about this stuff. I got to preach myself happy. Because sometimes I get all jacked up. Now, sometimes we get self-righteous. And sometimes we look at what we've done. Oh, my. (laughs) I guess it's just me. Sometimes we get self-righteous because... The Bible talks about a Pharisee and a tax collector who came into the temple and the tax collector came to the altar and he said, thank you, Lord, that I'm not like a tax collector. But that tax collector came and he says, God, I'm not worthy. There's nothing in me that's good. But if you'll forgive me, Jesus asked the people, he says, who was righteous? Surely not the one who said, thank you, Lord, that I'm not like that sinner over there. What are we doing? What are we doing? Are we so self-righteous now 
that the Holy Spirit couldn't possibly be convicting me. He must have been talking to you. Oh, my. But listen, I, I want to tell you something. It's not your job to convict your neighbors. Sometimes we want to, don't we? You can't be the Holy Spirit. You got to let the Holy Spirit do the convicting. Why do you think it's so important to spend time on your knees? To pray that the Holy Spirit would convict them. Because listen, if you ain't the Holy Spirit, I promise you, you ain't got my ear. You start talking some wayward stuff, I'm out. Oh, no, I, I don't want to hear that nonsense. Now, when the Holy Spirit speaks, <laughs> oh, my, what have I done? Ouch. Holy Spirit, thank you. Holy Spirit, help me. Are you with me? A condemned heart is unhappy. A condemned heart is trapped. A condemned heart will quit. And a condemned heart is a defeated heart. You ever felt defeated? The enemy tried to convince you that there's no coming back from where you are? Where the enemy told you that there was no covering left for you. There's no blood that can cover what happened. The enemy never lied to you. Told you, well, if you wouldn't have done that, you might have made it. But since you've done that, there ain't no cover, no blood, no forgiveness. You're done. Man, I, all I got to tell you is if that was true, I wouldn't be standing here right now. I wouldn't be standing here right now. And sometimes your action might be wrong, but your heart is right. Oh, my. Let me talk about it. You remember King David? King David broke every law from Genesis to Revelation. And God said, that's a man after my own heart. Sometimes your heart can be right. You can have a right standing with God, but your mind's messed up. Why do you think the Bible says renew your mind daily in the word of God? Because we all have dark areas in our mind that we have been deceived by the devil. He's the father of lies. He's been doing it for a really long time. And he'd like to think that there is no hope for you and you are defeated. But I promise you, if you get over here and you look at the promises of God, I am the victor. I am not the victim. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Our strength comes from salvation. The Bible says, put on the breastplate of righteousness. That is not your righteousness. That is Christ's righteousness. What does a breastplate do? It covers your heart. It covers your organs. It covers everything that's vital for you to live a healthy life. Put on the breastplate of righteousness, which is the righteousness of Christ. As you walk through this weary world with our beaten and broken flesh. Because I promise you, you'll fall short. But if you're carrying the breastplate of righteousness, the righteousness that God gave you, you can walk in assurance. You can walk in a surety. You can walk in the promises of God knowing that you have been redeemed, you have been washed, and you are the righteousness of Christ. Too many times we want to look at people, you're going to hell. If you don't clean it up, you're going to hell. Come on now, that's not Jesus. Jesus never said that. 
He said, I don't accuse you. I don't judge you. Go and sin no more. There will come a day when you will have to stand before him and he will judge you. But I got great news. As long as you're sitting here breathing and sucking air, you have not been judged. Not by God. Now, when you take your last breath, uh uh-oh, and you leave this earth, you will stand before him, and he will stand before you as your judge. But until that time, there is room at the cross. There's room at the cross. And his blood is sufficient. Look at Paul. Paul was killing Christians, slaughtering them. Matter of fact, he went to the, to the judge and the jury. He said, hey, look, give me a letter. He says, I can go out and kill these Christians. But listen, he had a heart after God. He just didn't realize because his heart was right, but his head was messed up. Sometimes your heart can be right. You could be sitting in right relationship with God and you are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit and your mind is screwed up. You're looking at things wrong. So the conviction of the Holy Spirit is set to remind you of his promises. Son, I set you free from this. What are you doing? I love you. I paid the price for you. But what you're doing is not good. Too many times when that conviction comes, we want to run from it like it's condemnation. Don't be deceived. And sometimes I know a lot of folks who live in condemnation don't think they're worthy, don't think that God can use them, don't think that God is ever going to forgive them, I got news for you. That's a lie from the pits of hell. So we got to figure out what's a lie and replace it with a truth. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. When the enemy says there's no hope for you, Oh, my, we have the great hope in Christ Jesus. We have to find the truth. That's why we got to study our word. Listen, but don't get me wrong. You can study the Bible all you want and still walk in unrighteousness. I don't care how much you study that word. If you don't apply it, uh uh-oh. I'm being good today. I'm (laughs) I'm being good today. Go with me. I, I, I know I probably didn't give it to my wife. It's not her fault. It's mine. Yeah, you heard me right. It's not her fault. It's mine. Yeah, that's what I said. It's not her fault. It's mine. I said it three times. I should be redeemed by now. I'm going to the book of James. I'm going to chapter 1, and I'm going to verse 23. So, this scripture... I want to bring it in a different light. We all know the, the hard meaning of it, but I want to bring it in a different light. 23. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. Oh my. Okay. You come to church. You learn that God loves you. You give your heart to Christ. You become the righteousness of God. But you walk out the door and you forget it. God shows you who you are, and you walk out the door and you forget it. Now, we know this scripture is also saying that when you see your sin in the Bible, and it's like a mirror, and you see in that mirror, you see the dirt on your face, uh, uh-oh, you got to wipe it off, right? I mean, if you look in the mirror and you got a booger hanging out your nose, what are you going to do? 
I know, I know, I know. Right? At least if you see one hanging out my nose, please let me know. Because it happens sometimes. But listen, so you're reading the word and you see something that the word says you shouldn't be doing, but you are doing it. So you recognize something in your life that you've got to get cleaned up. Right? So you come to the altar and you ask Christ to forgive you. And he does. His grace and his mercy. Man, there is no end. Listen. So then you walk out the door and you forget who you are now. Because Christ has given you his righteousness and taken your sin upon himself. So therefore, God shows us who we are in him and we walk out the door and forget it. There we're a hearer, but not a doer. Oh, my. Just a different perspective of that verse. I just wanted to share that. Sometimes God will show you who you are, and then you walk out the door and forget all about it. Conviction is a reminder that you have forgotten that you are the righteousness of God. Condemnation is a judgment and a sentence that has already been released. The enemy would like you to think that you've been judged. The enemy would like you to think that it's already done and over. But Christ said, as long as you're breathing, as long as your heart is still beating, as long as you have a mouth to profess, you can be forgiven. There is grace and there is mercy at the foot of the cross. He said, confess your sins. And he is faithful to forgive you and wash it all away. When you feel conviction, (sighs) I'm being nice. I told you I was going to be nice. When we feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit, and God is reminding us that that's not who we are anymore, that's who we was, and he's reminding us that we are the righteousness of Christ now, so therefore, we can walk through power. Where does power come from? Revelations chapter 12, verse 10. Let me show you again. Who accused the brethren. Oh, yeah. When I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength. Salvation gives you strength. Strength for what? To overcome sin. And strength and the kingdom of our God, oh my, and the power of his Christ have come. Where does power come from? From Christ. From Christ. The accuser of the brethren has already been judged. When Christ came, he went down to hell and he told that devil, he says, give me the keys. And he brought them back. And he said, here you go. They're yours. Somebody should be shouting. (laughs) The only thing that holds us back in condemnation is the fact that we have forgotten who Christ has died to bring us to be. The Lord convicts, the devil condemns. Therefore, when the devil starts lying to you and telling you who you are not, what you are not, you just tell him who you are. He's right. I fall short. He's right. 
I ought not be doing that. But Christ is right. He cleansed me of all of that. He calls me righteous. He said, I'm not looking at you, Mike, because of what you've done or what you do. He said, I'm looking at you as if you were my son hanging on that cross. I'm looking at you because of what he did. He was holy and perfect. He conquered the flesh, something we have not yet to do. But there's going to come a day when he comes back in the clouds and he takes us home and he changes these bodies in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, and all of this unrighteousness disappears. And we become the righteousness of God. And we put on that robe of righteousness, no longer walking in sin, no longer walking in the things of the flesh, but now I'm walking in the robe of my master, the, the salvation of the Lord, and I have nothing to fear, and sin has no part in me. I'm almost done. I told you 20 minutes. I didn't lie. Would you stand with me? Pete, would you play something, Saul? If that was you today and, and the Lord was talking to you today and the enemy has bombarded your mind and tried to hold you back and strap you down in condemnation and you haven't been able to move forward in the righteousness of Christ because you have forgotten who God has created you to be. I want you to come up. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. There's no shame here. There's plenty of room at the cross. Amen. There's no shame here. There's no condemnation here. Today, when you leave this house, I want you to square your shoulders back and lift your head high because you've been de delivered. You've been redeemed. You've been made new, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen? Praise God. We're going to pray for these folks. Mike, would you guys pray? I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. So listen, let, let, let's pray and, and we'll, you guys can go ahead and go if, if this is not you. No, matter of fact, I want you to stay right where you're at. I want you to honor God in what he's doing right here. And I want you to pray right, where, right from where you're at. Because someday this might be you. Someday you might be struggling. I want you to pray right where you're at. 